So now we're gonna focus on how cardiac muscles contract. So this does it through a specific mechanism called EC coupling. So unlike the skeletal system where it's innervated by the neurotransmitter generated from the nervous system, okay, if you remember, cardiovascular system is regulated autorhythmically, right, by the pacemaker, and the contraction are generated via that actual mechanism through this EC coupling, right? And so if you remember from the muscular system, when we talk about the actual contraction of skeletal muscle, how was it regulated? So the most important element that was leading to the actual contractions was calcium, right? So calcium is the main regulator of, of all muscles, right? So the myofilament region here, there was a carrier protein, if you remember, called troponin. Troponin was a carrier protein where the calcium binds to, creates this calcium troponin complex, which activates the tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is blocking the myosin head from bind binding to the actin filament. However, whenever the troponin complex becomes active, tropomyosin lifts the myofilament, the actin head, and the myosin head binds to the myofilament, okay? So that's the main cascade for skeletal muscle. The, the cardiac muscle works very similar way, it's just there's an extra step to it. So you have this roaming intracellular and extracellular calcium, right? But you have this high population of, of calcium molecules that are roaming around the, the extracellular fluid, there is an action potential that's generated. This action potential goes down the T-tubules and causes these calcium channels to open. When the calcium channels open, you have this influx, this passive influx of calcium that goes into the cell, right? Now, the concentration of calcium is so minuscule that it does not bind to troponin as efficiently, and so there is a need for an excessive surplus of calcium. So the calcium, the extracellular calcium, binds to this molecule, this receptor called the RYR receptor. This is a receptor that is next to the sar sarcoplasmic reticulum. You remember, from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you have this high volume of calcium, right? So the high material of calcium. And so when this, the calcium from the extracellular fluid acts as a catalyst, in a way, to activate this RYR receptor, which opens all of this high population of calcium molecules that are present in the SRY, so the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and you have this huge influx, right, of calcium, of intracellular calcium, which eventually binds to the troponin, right? Troponin becomes active, lifts the myosin head, and the myosin head now can bind to the myofilament, right? And so this is mainly for, rela for contraction, excuse me. Contraction of the cardiac muscle. Here, on the other hand, we're looking at relaxation. So relaxation involves the opposite of what's happening right here, right? So you have this calcium that has been bound to the troponin, so it detaches, so the calcium goes up, is released from the troponin, and some migrate back into the SRY, excuse me, the SR, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it becomes stored here. The remaining gets shunted outwards back into the extracellular fluid with these antiport channels, so you have these calcium sodium antiport channels where the calcium goes out. So Ca2 plus comes out. And you have these sodiums molecules that are in the extracellular fluid that comes in, right? And so this allows for the maintenance of a homeostatic balance for calcium. However, in order to protect the actual balance, the gradient balance of the sodium, you also have these potassium, sodium pumps that actually regulate the 
sodium levels inside. So that if you remember from the potassium pumps, what do they do? So the potassium sodium pumps, they bring potassium into the cell and sodium out of the cell. And this is a form of active transport because it's going against the gradient and it also requires ATP.